Bonjour et bienvenue à la langue fluente. Je m'appelle Muskan, aka The Smiley. And today, your smiley is back with yet another exciting video in the TEF course playlist Learn TEF in 15 Days. That is the writing module Expression Écrite. And today, we'll be discussing the tips and the tricks to clear out your writing exam in TEF without any struggles. And I'll tell you a few tips from using which you can gain a little bit confidence as well. So, without wasting any time, let's get started. Okay, so in the expression retreat, let's see how this exam goes by first. So basically, this exam lasts for one hour. That is the total duration that you have to write down your exam is one hour. Secondly, the point comes in, it is of 450 points. As you can see, the speaking and writing have a very high priority in the list because they have 450 points each. Then, you have two sections in it, section A and section B and they have their own markings and rankings accordingly. And here, they will be checking your writing capacity and capabilities in French. So, without wasting, let's see a little forward. Now, basically the structure here goes out to be in two parts, section A and section B. Whereas in section A, what happens is that you have to tell a story using any of the tenses. And most probably we say that you need to use your past tense. Okay. Or you might be writing a short newspaper article about an accident or an incident that happened. And here you need to write only 80 words. No more than 80 words are required. Therefore, in section B, express your point of view and present your arguments to defend it. So basically, as you can see, section A was a plain section where you, where you were just supposed to write down a few things. Whereas in section B, here you're supposed to present your arguments as well. So that means you have to express your point of view. You have to be certain, pour or contrary. Either you will be against something or you will be for it. Okay, and you'll be presenting at least four to five arguments in this written part. Or, presentation of problem of daily life. So basically also you can do the presentation of the problems that you have in your daily life. Like there could be something that you have to write a letter to someone or something stating that, you know, there are so many cattle in your area. Or you can also state that um, any public issue you can state. Plus, you have to write... 200 words here so i hope you can you can guess that here's the element of surprise you have to write 200 long words 200 words here 80 words there in total 280 words or to 300 words you guys are supposed to write using complete french okay and that too in a formal manner okay now let's see a few things or the few types of questions that are very common to come in your writing part the very first one is beginning of the press articles. Like, in the beginning of the press articles, they might state the date and the place of incident, where the incident took place, and you're supposed to continue and make a story out of it. So now, you guys might just notice that how difficult that is that you're supposed to continue a story that too in French. In English or in Hindi, your mind might just work that way, but in French, it's very difficult to think about the situations in that particular language. Okay, so there comes the two points. The first one is your creativity and the second one is your imagination. When you combine both of these things, only then you can succeed in this part. Whereas, the second most common types of questions that you get is presentation of your daily life questions. There might be something they're asking about your daily routines or anything where you can continue or speak something about or write something about. Okay. Now, the examiner, examiners will have a certain pattern, a certain way to judge you. Let's see that pattern. Your ability to communicate is the most important. Here, we are not talking about the verbal communication that you will be doing, but the written. But the written one here. That means when you are speaking, you can express your ideas pretty easily. Whereas when you are writing, it becomes difficult because sometimes you lack vocabulary or you don't have the perfect words to match it. Let's see. Sustainability of your texts for the situations proposed, logic of your text, organization and clarity of information and etc. I'll just take an example that they have given you on Sunday morning, this, this incident happened. Now, suppose, now the incident that we are talking about, you are supposed to continue it. Now, there are four parameters that they can judge you on. 
The first is the sustainability of the text. How long is the text? Are you putting proper punctuation marks? Are they actually making any sense? Is there a particular flow in it? Second goes out to be the logic. Like suppose if the situation is pretty, I'll say serious, but I'm framing something out of it that is non-serious or doesn't make any sense. Like if we are talking about two buses crashed, but I'm bringing a car into it, that doesn't make any sense out of it. And the third one is the organization, how you have organized the text, how you have organized your ideas in a plain order, in a simple manner. And the fourth one goes out to be clarity of information. That whether the information that you guys want to present, that you guys are throwing up as arguments or you're presenting in the text, is it clear, informable or can it can be easily comprehended or not? These are the main four parameters that they can assess you on. Then we have the second criteria that is linguistic criteria. Here comes your language, your grammar, your vocabulary, your coherence, your spellings, your punctuation, your pronunciation, no, not pronunciation, I don't think pronunciation matters here, right? Okay, <laughs> coming back to the point. So, why punctuation marks? Because we can judge that where the sentence actually ended or where the new line is actually beginning from. Second comes your grammar, the uses of your tenses, the kinds of verbs that you're using. The third is your spellings. I think while learning a new language or writing something in French, this is the very common mistake that we all tend to do. That is the spelling mistake. So be careful about your spelling mistakes. And yeah, that is all. I think we covered everything here. Okay, let's see. Now, without, you know, forgetting this point that I'm going to tell you now, because it is pretty important. And without proceeding further from this, I'll just tell you two main points that are very important as of now. The first one is there are two sections, A and B, and both of the sections are compulsory to be done. Like suppose you have only one hour to do both and you didn't manage your time well and you spent your 45 minutes doing the section A, whereas there's no time to complete section B, where you're supposed to write 200 words. But, and you're thinking to leave that, it's never going to benefit you. Trust me on that point. Why? Because both the sections are compulsory and they have their own marking schemes. Whereas in the second part, Written production must be done on a question sheet. That means you have to do it directly on the question sheet. You don't have any rough sheet that is provided to you to write down your ideas on. Draft sheets are not taken into the account. So if you're writing your ideas on the draft and the rough sheet where you have, okay, okay, these are the ideas and you're not faring them down side by side, it's not going to help you. Why? Because you're wasting a lot of time. You already have only one hour to complete both the sections and that too, you're taking your time out to write everything down in the rough sheets. I don't think that's intelligent enough. So just frame down your ideas onto the rough sheets and frame the sentences directly into the, your production sheet. I hope the point is clear to you. Now, I have a few advices for you guys that you can follow while doing your section A. Let's see them. So advices for writing in section A. Before writing, after writing and I'll see, you know, I'll just divide these categories like this. Okay, so before writing, what all can be done before writing? How can you prepare your mental simulation? How can you be actually prepared before the writing, pre-writing? Let's see that. Underline the important words of the article announcement. Classify all the ideas that you write down or wrote down. Okay, let's see them in detail. Firstly, if we are talking about the very first point that is underline the important words of the article announcement, they might have given you a question. And here in the question, you're supposed to underline the points that you think are very important to frame a story. Okay, like suppose I can read that two buses collided. The, this is a very important point. I'll just underline it. Why? Because this is how I'm going to frame my story. Okay, I can frame that, you know, the bus drivers were drunk. So this ad. This, you know, accident happened or I can say that something was off there. There was some animal who was crossing by. So this accident took place. It is an important point that I need to underline. Whereas the second advice here would be classify all the ideas that you wrote down. Here comes the previous point that I discussed. That is in your rough sheet, classify all the ideas that comes in your mind and make logics out of them. See which one makes the logic for you and logically classify them into your plain sheet that is your production sheet now i have the instructions for you that are generally given while you're starting your section a and these are you are given the beginning of a newspaper article you have to finish it by imagining a text 
of 80 words minimum with several paragraphs. That means the, the thing that you will be writing, the written part you will be doing in the section A should be divided into different paragraphs and there can be more than 80 words but no more than 120 words. Okay, let's see a few examples that we have. Sujet 1. Ils oublient la fille de 14 ans au bord de la route. So if you understood it, if you actually try to comprehend it, it's a pretty serious situation that they forgot their son. How could that be possible? Hai na? So just write down the logics that you find out of it, that under which circumstances they might have forgotten it to continue the story. Let's see one more. That is, une fille de deux ans retrouvé ayant seul dans la rue, sa maman était la Gohan Marie. Okay, I hope that makes sense to you. And the third one, un enfant de quatre, quatre ans retrouvé ayant seul dans la nuit à quatre heures du matin. So this boy was found, you know, sad, lonely, or just, you know separately from his family in four o'clock in the morning so i think that's a pretty serious issue as well so you can write down all the rough ideas that you have in the rough sheet that will be provided to you and then make the sense out of them put out the logics that you have and frame them down in your production sheet let's see a few examples that can be done now okay so before proceeding further to the examples that I wanted to quote, first I have a very important thing that is your evaluation criteria. How will we evaluate you guys in the writing part in section A? Let's see a few important points. Write structured and coherent text. Now, structure and making logics out of your text that you're writing is most important because if the paragraphs, if the text is not structured, it's not going to make any sense. Now, link ideas between each other it don't throw vague ideas like this story a and this story b they should be related to each other they should have some common point that the examiner actually can relate to just remember you are presenting your ideas to someone who has no idea that what was the situation and how was it passing in your head now use a past tense and an appropriate vocabulary now when i say past tense that means you, there are three types of tenses that can be used here passé composé imparfait and plus que parfait so please be sure that you're practicing all of them and using them simultaneously to make sense out of it and to improve your grammar so that you can impressionate the examiner that you know all three of them plus work on your vocabulary use appropriate vocabulary accordingly Give your point of view and set out arguments. This is the most important point that I think should come in section A. Why? Because here you are presenting your point of view. Your ideas, your point of view, your opinions are being presented to the examiner. So they should not sound vague. They should not be inappropriate. Just remember that you are presenting the ideas to someone who is not, who is not a uh how to explain that to you who is not at all you know so just remember that you're presenting your ideas to someone who is just out of the mind and he doesn't knows what you're talking about so just be careful that the ideas are very soundful and logical to the person who can imagine your right and set out your arguments suppose you have four arguments against the text that you have written present them logically again comes the same point that i or if i am the examiner i don't know what's going inside your head now finally let's see an example for the section a okay so in the first example that we'll be doing under section a i'm going to read out the question for you and after it you can pause down the video and write down your answer and then i'll provide your correction sheet as well where you can match your ideas and see what ideas did i have while writing this down okay so the example Voici le début d'un article de presse. Terminez cet article. En ajoutant à la suite texte de 80 mots minimum, on faisait plusieurs paragraphes surpris dans une boîte aux lettres. Surprise dans une boîte aux lettres en Belgique. Un chômeur de 31 ans découvert dans sa boîte aux lettres une enveloppe avec plus de 6000 euros et un mot indiquant bon chance okay guys now you can pause down this video and write out your answer in more than 80 to 120 words and then check out the correction that i have for you see you okay so 
So when you read my correction that I provided, I hope you liked it and enjoyed it. And I hope that you were able to imagine in your mind that what I was thinking while writing it down. Now that you have read it once, you might have seen that I have used past tense like indicating here in the line. Il est rentré chez lui. That means I have used passé composé along with the être in it. Okay, être as auxiliary. So you might have seen passé composé is being used. It matches the criteria because I needed to use it for something that has already happened in the past. Okay, that's why I have used the passé composé. The action is already finished now. So I hope you liked it and overall understood the idea that how the writing goes about. Let's see the aftermath that you need to do for writing. That is post writing. Did you respect the structure of the newspaper article? Now, did you respect the structure here means did you actually understood the you know situation that was given to you and did you write according to that? Did you see or did you use the logical connectors correctly that did you use connectors like pui, apre, avant, neomua, cependant. So it is important to use the logical connectors. Why did I say that you know it is important to use the logical connectors because there is one main reason for that. It actually joins everything correctly and logically. It makes it logically sound as well. Did you respect the past tense as well? As I told you, especially indicated it that past tenses are very important while writing down the section A. So I expected it. I used the past tenses appropriately. Have you checked the syntax, spellings and the punctuation? So as you might have seen in my reading also, I was... I was waiting or I was stopping at the point where there was a punctuation mark. So that actually makes you imagine that this thing was going this way. Okay, now let's see the advices that I have for you in the section B. But if you re if you want to recheck the section A, you can go back in the video and pause the screen there again. Okay, so in your section B, I'll ha I have a few pre-checks that you need to do and I'll just take a situation here that is you're supposed to write a letter to address a public issue to the editor. So here if you're writing a letter to the editor, there are a few things that you need to keep in your mind. That is writing time for each or here the writing time for the letter is only 40 minutes. How I have I divided it? Like if you take 20 minutes to complete your section A, you will automatically have 40 minutes to complete your section B that has more weightage and more words to it. Underline the important words of the newspaper statement. Now they might have given you a plot. Underline. Again, you have to do this step only that you have to underline the statement and the important things that you think would be helpful to create the letter or to write the plot there. Sort all the arguments. Suppose now you have multiple arguments that this has happened, why this has happened and what is the solution of it and what are the things that you are proposing. Sort them down logically. I know when you are reading it for the first time, your mind is bombarded with many ideas. So it's always better to write them down quickly in the rough draft and then fare it down. Now, let's see a few instructions. You have to read a statement in the newspaper. Write back to that newspaper to say what do you think about it in more than or in 200 words. Develop at least three arguments to defend your point of view. There might be an issue that you think is an issue according to the editor. It might not be that big issue. Okay, so you're supposed to prove your arguments right. Here you have to write it this way that you have to convince him that this is going wrong and you're supposed to correct it. Okay. Let's see the evaluation criteria that we have here. Adequacy of your text to the proposed situation, like whatever you are writing, is it adequate? Does it even make sense? Does it even has any logic to the situations that you are proposing it against? Logic of your speech. There might be some logic. There might be some connection. The connection in your arguments that you are presenting. It doesn't matter like how many arguments or how, or how harsh they are. But they should be interrelated to each other so the examiner can actually read them that way that this is being proposed to him. Organization and clarity of information. Whatever information you are proposing in your arguments, they should be organized and very clear to read. Okay, he should read it at once and he should understand and imagine that this is the problem that is happening with the people around. Okay, now we have something that you need to remember as well. Come on, I'll tell you that. Now, since the document type that you are writing is a letter, you need to remember a few important things that should be in your mind at all the time. 
The first one is respect the form of the letter that is given to you. If the letter is very formal, you should remain to the formal salutations and the formal letter. Okay, rather than shifting on to the informal salutations and the way of writing it. The second point comes in, write an introduction and a conclusion. I think these points are very important. Why? Because introduction and the conclusion are the ones that make the most impact on the brains. Okay, like if I talk about myself and if I'm reading an article, when I read and when I read the, you know, introduction of it, if the introduction is very powerful, very influencing, I'm going to read it to the end. Okay, because then it has influenced my mind in a positive way. But if the introduction is not that good, it is very boring or it doesn't has that power in it, it's going to make you bored. Okay, and you won't be interested to read it throughout and then you'll just be like, hmm, and finished. Okay, whereas comes in the conclusion, if your main ideas are not that good while reading, if your conclusion is powerful, although you can make a strong sense out of it. Why? Because the introduction and the conclusion are the ones that actually leave a long term impact on your brain. Okay, introduction sorted my letter out and the conclusion sorted my marks out that yes, these were the ideas that he proposed and they were actually powerful. Okay, now. Make three separate paragraphs for each contain a different argument. As I told you, there are three minimum arguments that you need to throw. That means there should be three different paragraphs. Why three different paragraphs? Because that way you can present that information. In the first paragraph, it could be clearly stated that this is the argument that I'm proposing. If that, not, if that is not possible, this is the second one that I'm proposing. If, it's, if it, that is not even possible, I'm, the, I'm proposing this third one. Okay. So there are three arguments that are coming all along that you can pick and these are the ones that I'm giving to you. These are my strong points. Okay. Trick that each of your argument is introduced with a sentence, developed and illustrated with an example. I think whenever you're presenting or argumenting, the most important thing is using examples because they can leave a long term impact. Okay. Like if I'm presenting an argument here, that is I am sick and tired of the cattle that are roaming around. Okay, so what is the solution to it? Or rather than proposing the solution, I could also present the example here. Like whenever I go for walks, there is, you know, waste outside. People are feeding the cattle that way. There are monkeys in the area. Like in the area which I live, there are a lot of monkeys. So when people feed the cattle, the monkeys come all along. So that's a danger to me, right? So I can simply write it down that this, these are my problems and kindly propose a solution to it. And... Check that each of your argument, okay, it's the same thing, right? You have to introduce it. You have to do one thing that is explain it with the help of the example. And the last thing comes in that you have to propose the solution. It's the same point that I've mentioned. Use connecting words to introduce my paragraph and between different ideas. Now, what I'll do to link all my arguments, like suppose my one argument is A and my second argument is Z. So how would I found a linking point between them? It's very simple that I can use linkers or connectors. Okay, when I'm using linkers and connectors, it can bind them together. It can connect my ideas that I'm presenting. Okay, so without wasting any time now, let's see the example that we have. Okay, now let's read the example that we have. Vous avez lu l'affirmation suivant dans un article de journal. Il est nécessaire de consommer différents. Différemment pour l'avenir de notre planète. Écrivez une lettre au journal pour dire ce que vous en pensez. Développez au moins de trois arguments de défendre votre point de vue. So now you have understood the plot that they have given you so that you can pause the video and after this time I'll provide you the correction or the letter that I have written and we can sort it down. Okay, you can pause it and write down your response to it. All right, now that you have read the letter that I have presented, let's see a post technique that we need to do on it. So the first thing that you need to check is, did you build the argumentative text? As you can see in my paragraphs or in my letter that I have presented, I have arguments in each of the paragraphs. Okay, so in my checklist, I'll say check. The second comes in, have you used verbs and opinions introduced expressions? Yes, I have done that. I have used different verbs. I have used, you know, doma opinio, selomua, je pense que, these stuff. And that presents that I have presenting, I have, or I have presented my opinion to the examiner. Check. 
third comes in have you illustrated an idea or an argument for example did i present everything with the help of the example as i have three arguments i have presented all the examples with them okay so this goes to be checked that the examiner can actually imagine that this is the problem and this is the practical implementation of it whereas did you conclude using the appropriate linking words yes i did it i concluded there was a strong conclusion to my letter and i used the appropriate linking words as well that means i'll put a check here as well so congratulations guys that is it you have done your section b as well congratulations felicitation so now comes the very main point that is how would you do the arrangement all together please remember the most important thing that now comes in is your time management just remember section a goes out to be 20 minutes whereas section b goes out to be 40 minutes if it exceeds that time stop doing your section a and directly move on to section b because you need to divide your time according to the marks that you will be getting okay i hope you understood my point and that is it for the video and i hope you enjoyed it as well if you have missed any of my previous videos you can do, go down to the link given description in the below and you can check it and if you really don't want to miss any video from me you can go and subscribe to the language fluence channel i'll see you guys soon in the next video until then take care of yourselves au revoir achevianto bisu bisu au revoir